On the breakfast this morning, a federal high court sitting in Abuja has sacked Governor David Umahi of Eboi State and his deputy, Dr. Eric Igwe, following their defection from the People's Democratic Party to the All Progressives Congress. What is the implication of the court's judgment as we inch closer towards the 2023 general elections? Also on the breakfast, the House of Representatives has reversed itself on the three gender-related bills that failed to pass in the ongoing amendment to the 1999 Constitution. Will the lawmakers this time vote for the gender bill? And we'll be reviewing the big stories on the front pages of our national dailies. Very good morning to you. It's a thrill to be back on your screens this morning with The Breakfast on Plus TV Africa. I'm Kofi Bartels. And I am Messi Bopo. It's good to be back on your screen today. Yes, indeed. Mercy. Very good morning to you and uh, fantastic looking, um, splendid as always. Thank you. The shine eye is too. rubbing off on me <laughs> gradually, gradually. Um, a lot to talk about today. It promises to be a very interesting episode of The Breakfast. Um, uh, we're inching closer towards 2023. Yeah. Yes, indeed. Uh, I mean, just yesterday, I was just remembering that we have, it's no longer one year because we're already counting down. Oh, yeah. I mean, how many more days uh, just to go? Uh, and a lot's actually happening, but we would definitely be looking at some of the issues. I mean, the issue of defection and the fact that what does that even mean? Mm -hmm. Because you also have states where uh, some political or politicians or governors have defected. What does this mean? Mm -hmm. uh, would this also encourage some persons to actually challenge, you know, this defection process? Uh, is this going to change the issue of, you know, the political ideology of our politicians? <laughs> <laughs> you know, what, one thing we can be sure of is that the courts are going to be pretty busy in this period. And, but, yes. you know, I, I don't know how that's going to happen uh. because you also have the fact that... Uh, you know, the judicial workers, I mean, the courts, they're saying that they're going to embark on strike following the judicial autonomy that has not been granted to some states. Out of 36, we're looking at eight states. And so they might necessarily not be busy if that strike actually happens. Interesting times. Interesting times. Um, let's quickly introduce uh, some stories to you. Um, a trending segment right here on the Breakfast and Plus TV Africa where we uh, place our hands, our fingers on the pulse of the nation and also of course look at what people are saying the stories that have attracted attention of nigerians and indeed people around the world as well first one uh, is uh, sort of a shocker to many uh, but one of the complaints some people have had in the country is that there are so many cars at the nation's police stations you know and of course nigerians reacted um uh, with with uh, a pleasant surprise or um, with um, happiness to the order by the Inspector General Police, Osman Baba, uh, that the impounded vehicles at police stations, you know, must be evacuated. So he ordered the immediate evacuation of impounded vehicles at the nation's police station all across the country. Uh, the acting first uh, public relations officer, if Olumi Olumu you are at Deja Be made this note in a statement yesterday, it was trending online. Um, he said the order followed the unprofessional manner of vehicles were stacked within police facilities, causing nuisance and disgusting sight. You know, and some people were saying that they, they didn't know uh, that the the police are aware that the uh, environment is disgusting. <laughs> you know, people were saying they didn't know that. Um, he said the IGP was unhappy with the practice of uh, stockpiling vehicles recovered from crime scenes or those whose ownership uh, was being contested. If we go into this matter, eh, we'll finish we'll today. Finish. We, we'll, we'll finish. We'll finish today. It's better said in peace. But, but I, not a few Nigerians, you know, on, on social media, um, were, were happy. They expressed happiness, you know, um, regarding this particular development. Well, um that's a very dicey, just like you have mentioned, it's a very dicey issue. If we actually start, we can't finish. But first of all, it's been commended that the IGP has actually noticed that these vehicles are constituting nuisance to the police environment and is not allowing you know, functionality. Because I mean, there's a way you just wake up and everywhere is very randy and then you begin to wonder what's going on really. So, but, but uh, you know, some of the issues that uh, some of these vehicles belong to, I mean, vehicles that were seized from crime scenes and what have you, 
but mostly not necessarily. We haven't even also looked at the fact that some vehicles are just impounded for um, several reasons, and we, we understand the dynamics surrounding all of this. But I think that we need to come to a place of honesty. We have to come to a place where we have to be very honest. We need a total reform for the police sector. A total reform. What we have to shut it down. I don't know. But if we shut it down, the question will now be how do we even go about policing the society and uh, running our affairs. But the point is, apart from this, we need an overhaul. That's what we need, really. It's a good one. But does it also stop the fact that you would have? I remember one time, so many years ago, I was in a vehicle. I really don't know. It was actually, you know, a private public vehicle, so you know what that means. And you have a police officer stopping for whatever reason, and we're like, we're taking you to the station, and yaddy, yaddy, yaddy. And of course, when we got there, they found out that, you know, the persons in the vehicle were um, really public, public figure. And so they were, oh, you can actually go at the end of the day. So you want to... <laughs> But that's what happens. That's what really happens. So I'm, I'm thinking that beyond this, we need an overhaul. We need to be very sincere. We need to come to a point where we say, hey, we can't tolerate all of this. And I can imagine how the IGP feels. The mm. fact that you get to a police station and you find vehicles everywhere. It's all choked up. You know, so uh. some people, some people were, were expressing the sentiment, looking at some comments, um, that they're hoping this is not a public, public relations uh, uh, move by the IGP. Say again? Um, some I, people you were yeah, very fast. Yeah, some people were expressing the view or you know the sentiment. They were saying they hope it's not a public relations um, move, a gesture by the IGP. Because imagine how many people have their vehicles impounded, <laughs> you know. And um, uh, they, they said, well, of course, the police have had some issues. You know, public ha haven't been too friendly in terms of the response and reaction, you know, to the news. For instance, you have one with the whole hijab thing, you have another one, you know. But, but of course, people will be rushing to the police stations to, but I can guarantee no, to no, get no. their vehicles, but I can guarantee you, I can guarantee you that there are some, there are a number of people who, whose vehicles are there who will not get those vehicles for free. Now, but there are some persons who have actually died. I mean, let's even put you it. Know. Now, from, you know, this particular report, the concerns are about uh, vehicles that we retrieve uh, from crime scenes, not necessarily because, I mean, all of this, no one actually took into cognizance the issue I mean, the fact that some vehicles were apprehended. I mean, those who you would say uh, had defaulted. Uh, the, 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 word, the word sounds like, you know, you arrested a car. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> uh, my God. Because you have to bail. This is the apprehend your You have to bail yourself and bail the, your car. So, so the, these persons, you know, because if you're talking about oh, the vehicles there, I think yeah. that most of it, not necessarily, I'm not trying to say that you don't have vehicles, uh, you know, that are packed at this police stations across the country from crime scenes. But we're talking about the fact that most of it would be the fact that some persons probably would have defaulted. I really don't know. Mm -hmm. Would have had an encounter with these police officers on the road and then they impound your vehicle and take it down there. So that category was not really included. Mm -hmm. That's it. Okay. The, I need to get it right. You're saying the ones that were impounded um, maybe. So, so you have different reasons, but yes, the yes, one that's yes. been highlighted that I'm saying mm -hmm. is the issue of uh, vehicles that have been recovered from mm. crime scene. Okay, so what, 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 he's, what he's saying is that the all impounded vehicles uh, and all unregistered exhibits at police stations must be uh, uh, evacuated. You How? Um, because because sometimes, Kofi, if you have a vehicle at the police station, a, a particular state, let's say for Lagos State now, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it depends on, you know, the issue. Mm. I mean, for instance, crime scene. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So I'm sure that there will be a tag. I don't know how it works at the police station. I've never worked there, but I don't know how to do it. But I would expect that uh, there will be probably a tag that... Uh, these vehicles from a crime scene yes. or it's just there, you know? So, so, but there so, are vehicles yeah. that are being taken from persons who I you can't actually explain, but you have police officers on the road and then they say, Something hey, happened okay, here. they take you to, that's Station. what they say, that's mm. not the sound. Mm. Taking you to the you committed a crime. Of course, the police will not take you if there's no crime committed. So that mm. was not highlighted. So, so what, I think, what I think this is saying is that, number one, you have impounded vehicles. Mm -hmm. That's the first thing. Number two, you have um, unregistered exhibits. So unregistered exhibits would be those vehicles that um, are taken to the police station 
on account of a crime being committed, okay, maybe you broke a traffic offense or something, a traffic rule, or you committed a traffic offense or something, uh, and then it wasn't registered as an exhibit because the case is not in court or the case is in court, that vehicle is not part so of the So it's evidence. illegal. It's something that is just there, okay? It's not in court. It's not been taken to court, say, exhibit 1A, in the case between the federal, like a, the, the, state like Boko, uh, <laughs> the state versus Messi Boko, the state versus Messi Boko, you know, they didn't register it. So what is it doing there? Ask you know, me that? now. Or it was just impounded, maybe not because of a crime. It was just impounded. What is it doing there? That I think that's what he's referring to, you know, um, talking about the practice of of stockpiling vehicles recorded from from crime scene. You know, I think we we won't take that too. To as 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 we we'll look into, so, we'll put too much meaning to that as we we'll, we will to the words um, impounded and exhibit unregistered. So exhibit. I think yeah. that vehicles that have been because over time following uh, you know this scene, I'm not saying because if you begin to put up all of this explanation, some person will ask you you have an idea how this works. Are you part of the cartel robbing and all of that, but if you have vehicles um, that are used to commit crimes. Most of the time, these vehicles are recovered in speed, so you don't have them being sent back. So, for instance, someone takes your vehicle and then they use it to commit a crime. They usually dump it somewhere, and the police will say, "Okay, fine." People recover it, so this, this, um, the speed of recovery of this uh, category of vehicles is always very fast. That's number one. So, I, I think that holistically, he probably would have just come out to say these vehicles that are not registered because you have this police. So, why have that, haven't they been registered? Someone picks your vehicle and then says, Oh, you broke the law, you did XYZ. Ex so, a, so a, why have it? As an exhibit, because the case may not actually be in court. Because we need to move yeah. on. But I, I think, I think um, like you, you said something really nice, which is. Um, you know, reform is what we need. Reform the Nigeria police. Um, if if you have these, um, you know, itinerant orders or itinerant, you know, statements by IGPs, just like we had, no roadblock, or that's sorry, just like we had no stop search, or don't ask for tinted permit, or you don't ask for some papers and all that, and then one IGP goes, the next one comes, and then it's back to square one, or after a while the IGP forgets. And then the police go back to square one. See, all these things are, these this, this orders and these decisions, these directives are made in, in a vacuum. It's just you wake up and say, we need to have these things being institutionalized, being part of the police That's lifestyle, the being part of the police culture. And then it's all down to reform. You know, the, the motive, the, the intent of these police officers, what is it? You know, these guys are, some of them, not all, some of them are criminals in uniform. I've been I've been a victim, so I know what I'm talking about. No, I understand. And totally. Some of them are criminals in uniform. You know, how, you, you I mean, you sometimes think that if if the, the this thing called car car is taken away from this world, that some technology comes that you don't have to use car again. You do us, and then you just appear where you're going to. <laughs> that, that, that 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 some policemen will not survive. No, uh, no, I, understand, will, I, I, I understand. The, the what obsession you're of, of, of the average Nigerian policeman with this thing called car is it's, it's, it's terrible. I totally agree. So, it's, so, it's just, it's, so I mean, let's, they're let's more interested assume... in cars than they are in, in criminals. They're more interested in cars than they are in crime fighting. The so, po average policeman in Nigeria steps onto the street, onto the road, and he's just looking for car. <laughs> you know, I don't get it. We need to have a technology that will just take away car so that we can rest. So, you know, so, so and, maybe uh, we need another, to have horses. Another, and, well, another thing is this. You know, the story of how these, 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 some of these police officers um, take over these cars and convert them to private use. You know, the police officers in this country are not meant to go on the operation without the operational vehicles. All right? The, 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 the officers, especially the special units, take these cars that they retrieve. Okay? Or they impound. Or they arrest. Because they arrest because cars. Because you're not registered. That's, that's why, what's been that, mentioned. That's, that's why they can ask you to bill your car. That's why I say they arrest your car. They take these cars and embark on, on, on movements that are not assigned or permitted by the station. So go to an area, raid the area, and pick up people. Or just pick a few people and throw them in or throw them into the booth. That's what SARS was doing. That's what SARS did to, to some people, including and, myself. And including, including yes, you. Yes, yes, yes. So, so you see them moving around. I mean, I was... 
I stayed in Port Harcourt for years, you know, in River State, Nigeria. And you see them moving around with Sienna in particular, then VW Jetta, and some of these vehicles. Or they would impound um, these private buses in Lagos, they do it as well. Look around the corner, look for which, which, uh, who, which uh, private car they can arrest. So you think it's a commercial bus in behind you. Are they, are they allowed to do these things? So, so I think what the IGP is doing is good, but it's a waste of time because we'll go back to square one ultimately. But let's move on, Mercy. Let's move on. Definitely. Uh, let's move on. There's more, more to talk about. Um, another trending one. Bauchi. Bauchi to marry off 100 repentant commercial sex workers. Wonderful. Let's, let's put our hands together. That's Bauchi State in northern Nigeria to marry off 1,000 repentant commercial sex workers. So many reactions to this one. Um, but the Bauchi State government reports have it. Reports have it. Reports have it. Has pledged to marry off at least 100 repentant commercial sex workers who indicated interest and presented uh, themselves to the state's HISPA department. HISPA, of course, is um, the, the Islamic law enforcement. Uh, the permanent secretary in charge of the department, Al-Haji Aminu Balarbe Isa, made this known yesterday at the uh, formal inauguration of vocational training for 575 repentant commercial sex workers. He said the government would rather sponsor the weddings of both Muslim and Christian women among them and provide them with dependable and reliable sources of livelihood. And uh, the reactions kept pouring in. At least 100 commercial sex workers. Mercy. Some, some people laughed at it. Some says who, some boys said who want to marry them. You know, um, some, some were calling this commercial sex workers repentant Boko Haram and all that, you know. But um, uh, I think majority of those who were yes, responding, you know, were painting the picture that the, the government of Bashi State doesn't know what to do with their time and with their money. That's what they're embarking on. So, like so I think that we've actually had this issue of prostitution, if this is what you want to call it, uh, sex worker. We're trying to be very moderate with it, but it has been a practice that's been ongoing okay. for a very long time. And if you want to look at the date, it backs date to uh, 20, two, 2,400, if I'm, if I'm okay, BCE. So I'm saying that this is an ancient practice. Okay. Just like you have shepherds, you have farmers. It's yeah. it's a practice that's been ongoing. See, to be very honest, yeah. without any religious bias and uh -huh. any cultural affiliation, to be very truthful, if you have had prostitution, um, this has been a practice for a very long time. It's not going to go now. So we totally understand the dynamics and the cultural and religious concerns, especially in the northern part of Nigeria. But let's be realistic. It's, this practice has been ongoing. But coming to the fact, you ask yourself, what would people want to indulge? And so, so I, I think that we constantly... We haven't prioritized, and some people will say we don't have a lot of persons who are very smart and intelligent and leadership that's very um, visionary, mm -hmm. you know, putting us in the right path. At the end of the day, if you want to look at it, even though the government of Bauchi State has not come out to say this is the reason why we're trying to do all of this, but however, you can deduce that it is from the premise that, hey, we want to cut out all of this. We mm. don't want sex workers. We want to cut down this line of practice. And so you ask yourself, why would this person say engage? They would probably engage. Number one, you look at Nigeria. I mean, you talk about job and employment. How does that? Yes, well, I understand that uh, according to the reports and the statement that it was a process where they're having vocational training and what have you. And so, <clears throat> but if you look at the Marriage Act at the end of the day, you find out that the Marriage Act would say that uh, if you want to, if you have a desire to get married, <clears throat> I don't understand in all of this, is there a desire or hundred okay, of these so persons? Are, are Do they, they have a desire to get married? Are they being married? forced is what you mean? Yes. Okay. However, it feels like they've been forced to get married. So um, the Marriage Act of, of, of our country would talk about desire. Now, if you have a desire, if anyone desires... So within this premise, do they have a desire to get married? There was the government just trying to get rid of this practice. So what I'm saying is this practice has been ongoing for a very long time. I don't think anyone can stop it. 
prostitution will be, it has always been, and will continue to be. But if you look at yeah. why some of these persons have engaged, you will want to agree with me that there are no jobs. Rather than ask them, yes, it, it sounds like, hey, we're going to provide uh, reliable jobs, it's going to be very sustainable, but how sustainable will it be? Let's also look at the issue of, of uh, uh, population. Our population is growing in, you know, in a degree that we cannot even that would say exponentially, according to economics, uh, because we're growing and you're looking at the uh, productivity level, the productive group and persons, because that's what it means. So if we're growing at that level and then we're not being very productive, then you want to say you have a population that's growing. You want to talk about out of school children, you, you refer that the statistics would be in the north. You, how do we come about or how do we get to the point of having the margaries on the street? So it's detrimental for us. Government, I don't really understand. How do you even intend to fund them? The fact that you use state resources, you're collecting allocation from the federal account and you want to use that uh, to sponsor weddings. Did they tell you they want to get married? Is that the problem? Well, well you, you, have, you have 575 uh, so-called repentant commercial sex workers. You know, so out of those 575, at least 100 are being married, or they're sponsoring the marriage of 100 of them. Um, it, it will therefore mean that um, it's not all of them who get married. So uh, if it's 100 who are getting married... Did, did then, they say they want to get married? Then four, Is that what they said? Um, then 475 <laughs> will not get married. So if it was, if it was forced, it would therefore mean that all of them would get married. But we don't know. We don't know. Um, uh, is, is, this, is this a favor being done by the government to these women? How, how do you say a favor? Uh, I, I'm, as, I'm asking. So, so you have commercial sex workers, you know, um, who will tell you they don't have anything better to do and may not even have a hope of settling down to family life, you know. And now maybe the word has been put out, oh, if anybody wants to marry them, can you come? I don't know. I don't know. We need to get more information. But this, this is just, we're just painting scenarios. No, and no, we're not painting I, scenarios. I, I, I'm, I'm coming. I'm coming, Mercedes. Okay, that's fine. And if maybe they say, okay, um, anybody wants to marry them, can you come? Are you interested? <laughs> you know, like it happened in one church in, in Delta, in Worry, where the pastor called all the single men to come out, or single men to come out, and then told women to come and line up behind them and ask the men to pick one. You know, it can happen. Um, that may not be termed forced. You know, do you like him? Do you like him? I want to say to him, he's a businessman, he likes you. Will you go under him? Will you go under her? Are you both together? Okay, marry now. We will pay. We will pay. So that you don't go back to do what you were doing. And then you can... And with, with, it's sketchy right no, now. No, so, but um, but what is, this is what he says. This is what the, um, the head of the Hisba uh, department in, in Bauchi State says. Quote, we will facilitate the entire process after obtaining their consent. Okay, after obtaining their consent and that of their parents and guardians before the marriages take place. So it's obviously not a forced marriage situation. No, I'm saying that, you, you, you know, I understand the dynamics. I, I mean, I understand sure the elements. They, so they might be they, actually happy and celebrating that they are no, settling see, so, down. So let's put, let's put this out. We understand uh, the practice. We understand what the heaps, uh, he's by police stands for. And so if, if, you, if you actually have the fact that it's coming through the Hispa police and we understand, you know, the cultural and the practice and all of that, you, you don't need to be told. I mean, well, you don't well, have no, to be we, told. We don't that, have to assume. No, it's, um, it's not um, an assumption. Yeah. It's the fact that... Are you, the fact are, are you trying to that, say for, that... For instance, they, I mean, were, coffee, they were forced. Coffee, we, we understand that bottles have been broken a couple of times. There are things that are not... We, you know, if you if you come to a certain part of the country, it's okay to do some certain things. Yeah. And though you go to a certain part of the country, especially the northern part of the country, it's not okay to do some certain things. So, looking at it, they don't have to categorically. The government does not have to categorically say this. But my point is, have these persons, hundred persons, come out to tell you that they want to get married the, 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 because the, the that headline, marriage act the says that you have to desire yeah, marriage. Yes. And so, did that come out to say? Me, me, I mean, it is really the, the, the church the, the that came out to tell people come. Uh, you want to get married, you want to get, headline, get married to brother this and all of that. The headline is not government to marry off. The headline is Bauchi government to so, sponsor. So why do you sponsor? Why okay, do you sponsor? Yeah, do you sponsor. just say they want to get married? Right. Why do we this have to sponsor they people? Um, why did they get into prostitution in the saying, first place? They are saying they want to sponsor. That's what. It, and, and the head of the Hizba, uh, the permanent secretary of the, in charge of the Hizba department, Alhaji Aminu Balarabi Isa, says that 575, okay, 
out of the 575 uh, so-called repentant sex workers, 100, the government will sponsor their marriages. Some of them are Christians. They will sponsor Christian marriages for them. That totally defeats... So what happens excuse, when they have these me, children? Excuse me. No, 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 no I'm can asking. I, can I Let's learn be very that, rational. So, so that, that, that defeats your, um, your conjecture that, um, you know, it's his bar, so it'll be forced marriage. No. Some are Christians. They have said that they'll be uh, married in the Christian... They'll sponsor Christian weddings for them. Okay? And um, they say that they will facilitate the entire process. Maybe introduce them to single men in Bauchi who also want to be married. Why? I'm coming. I'm coming. After the consent, obtain their own consent. So it's not for yes or no. Are you interested? If you're obtaining their consent, you can't force, force it to be a force on them. It's not force. And also their parents and guardians will also say, yes, we want our children to be married. Of course. Out of the 575, it's only 100 about. So it means that there are others who did not admit or accept or who want to just be okay with the vocational training. So we can't force it to be a force. It's not a force. So, 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 if, so, except, so, except, no, except no, Al Haji Aminu Balabi, Isa is lying. But we can't sit here and say he's lying. Kofi, when last did you go Kofi, to Kano State Mercy? No, Kofi, about let's be very realistic. Know? I mean, yeah. I, I like not to be politically correct here. Let's be very realistic. It's not about this person. No, that's what it is. Correct. If the government has a concern, you know, first of all, you need to ask yourself, why are these persons engaging in prostitution? Like we have mentioned, it has been a practice over time. And so if you have a group of persons who are prostituting and have become sex workers, they have not necessarily, so why do you have to seek the consent of their parent? They haven't told you that they want to get married. The Marriage Act would say that if you, anyone desires to get married, and that's the question. So it's okay, government wants to sponsor marriage. And because at the end of the day, this is me conjuncting and trying to put up stuff together. But it feels like you're trying to get them out of this kind of practice. However, we need to move away from this. <laughs> we're to, getting prompted. Yes, yes. Seriously. But I think, I think I, we'll, we'll, get, we'll get more information. More, we'll get more information. So, so to, there's more that we can very do clear. as a government. We but I, I understand attention. where you're coming from. You don't want there to be any... Any um, anything forced on, on because them because if they get married yeah, eventually, but, but, but and I if they're I into prostitution, the they will go back to it. To, to it, even when they're married, it won't seeking stop their consent and that of their parents and guardians is is the end of that that debate, you know. But anyway, let's go over to Oshun State, where it's been a, um, a, a another yet again another show of uh, the state of politics in this country. We've talked about Ekiti State um, recently with the uh, party primaries there. There were issues to the APC primaries. There were issues to the governorship primaries, with the PDP governorship primaries. And uh, in Oshu State, um, uh, Senator Ademola Adeleke, Ademola Adeleke, David Ozanko, the dancing senator. Mm -hmm. Yes, indeed. And Prince Dotumba Bayemi uh, emerged as the uh, candidates of the People's Democratic Party for the Oshu 2022 governorship poll. Uh, Mr. Dancing Senator, I don't know about you. Um, a faction of the party, however, led by Sunday BC, held their own governorship primary at Oshobo City Stadium, while Wale Ojo led faction held another primary at the Wokdif Center Oshobo, um, announcing the result of the primary held at Oshobo City Stadium. The deputy governor of Bayasa State um, and the chief returning officer, I, I assume, uh, Senator Lawrence Ehurujakbo, uh, who was the chairman of the governorship primary, said that Deleke garnered 1,887 uh, votes to emerge victorious, while Fatai Akin Bade uh, and Aki Ogumbi, uh, as well as Baba Emi, recorded no vote. Um, so this is it. But another primary held at the Wokdif Center of Shobo at that primary, returning officer Delani Ajanaku said accredited voters were 1,907, while valid, uh, while 22 votes were voided. Um, so, so we have these two factions disagreeing. But if you have the deputy governor of Bielsa State acting as returning officer for one, it then shows you which of the uh, uh, the primaries the party will recognize at the end of the day. So um, we wait for the PDP to say uh, no, we don't recognize a delegate. But as it seems, the dancing senator uh, Ademola Deleke, aka David Ozanko, is back. Well, a lot of persons have actually commended uh, that and uh, feel like, you know, PDP has actually made a choice. But, of course, we understand that crisis has never departed from political parties. And let's see how all of this pans out. Well, that's how much we can take at this point in time. We will definitely return with uh, top trending conversations tomorrow. In the meantime, we will return with the newspaper review. Please stay with us.